mutable functions. A mutable function is one whose behavior changes over time. So why would we want this? Well, some things just change over time. So for instance, let's say we want to represent a bank account that has an initial balance of $100 in it, and then we're going to withdraw money from that bank account. And we'll do that with the withdraw function. So every time I call withdraw, I'll pass in an amount to withdraw, and then it will return how much money is left in the bank account. So if I started with $100, I withdraw 25. Now I'm down to 75. And withdraw takes as an argument the amount to withdraw and returns the remaining balance. What happens if I withdraw $25 again? Well, I only have 75 in there. A second withdrawal of the same amount should give me a different remaining balance, $50 left over. Now this is new, right? Usually we write functions that are pure functions. Every time you give it the same input, you get the same output. But withdraw isn't like that at all. It's a non-pure function where when we give it 25 twice, we get two different numbers back. So it matters what order we call this thing in and how many times we call it and all of that to figure out its behavior. So we have a different return value. That's a big deal. Now if I try to withdraw $60 and I only have 50 in there, I'm going to get some sort of message that says I don't have enough money left. So in this case, we have a withdraw function that if you try to withdraw too much, it returns the string insufficient funds. But I can still withdraw $15 and then I have 35 left. Okay, so somewhere in this program, a balance is being stored. And that balance is part of the bank account. And so we're actually going to store it in a very special place within the function. So the way withdraw gets created is that we call a higher order function make withdraw pass in the initial balance, and then the parent frame that's created for this function, so it's the frame for make withdraw, will hold that balance for us. And then that balance will get decreased every time we call the withdraw function that was returned by make withdraw. Okay, so a function, remember what a function is, a function has a body and a parent environment. It's the parent environment that's going to hold the data associated with the function. And the body never changes. That's just the lines of code that happen every time we call the function. So I'm going to do things totally backwards. I'm going to show you the environment diagram, and then I will actually show you the code. So here's the environment diagram. I create make withdraw, which is a function that returns withdraw function. So it creates bank accounts. And when I call make withdraw, well then, I bind balance to the initial balance. And then I create a withdraw function, which will withdraw from this balance. And then I'll return that function, bind it in the global frame to the name withdraw. And I've called withdraw two times here. So withdraw is a function with a parent frame, and the parent frame holds the balance for what's left available to withdraw. So the parent contains all the local state that we need. Notice this balance isn't in the global frame. It's tucked away in this uh, parent frame of the withdraw function. Now, every time I call withdraw, I'm actually going to change the balance. So what you're seeing here is the balance left over when I started with 100, and then I took out 25, and then I took out 25 more. And all calls to the same function have the same parent. Here we called withdraw twice, this withdraw function. We called it twice, had the same parent both times because that's how our environment system works. And so they both have access to the same balance and they're both decreasing the same balance. So the first time we decreased it by 25, we had 75 left over. The next time we decreased it by 25, we had 50 left over. So that's the mechanics of how we're going to hide information inside of a function is by putting it in the parent frame. Okay, now we're going to move on to looking at the code that actually does this. So remember how local assignment works. Here's a, an example from early on in the course where we computed the percent difference between x and y. When we worked through this example, we saw that the difference was bound in the current frame, not up here in the global frame. Because we had this execution rule for assignment statements, which went, 
evaluate all expressions on the right of equals from left to right, and then bind the names on the left to the resulting values in the first frame of the current environment. That's local assignment. We've been doing this all throughout the course. Now we're going to do non-local assignment. So non-local assignment means that you can have some persistent state. Here's the definition of make withdraw that enabled the example I showed you earlier. Make withdraw takes a balance, that's the initial balance for the bank account, and it returns a withdraw function with the starting balance specified. It does so by defining a withdraw function, which is going to get returned. You withdraw a particular amount every time. You do it by declaring balance to be non-local. So this is a new kind of statement that we haven't seen before. It starts with non-local, then it says balance. And balance is a reference to this name, which appears in an enclosing scope. So it's not within this function we're defining, but instead it's in this outer function. Now we say if amount is greater than balance, we return insufficient funds. Otherwise, we rebind balance to be whatever balance was before minus the amount. And then we return the balance. And then we return withdraw. Okay, so here are the two important new parts. We declare the name balance non-local at the top of the body of the function in which it's going to be reassigned. It gets reassigned down here. So we want to say that that reassignment is non-local. And we do that by just stating it. So what that means is that this assignment statement will do something different than local assignment. What it will do is that it will rebind balance in the first non-local frame in which it was previously bound. Now where was it previously bound? Well, it was bound up here in the make withdraw frame. So these two statements work together. Balance does the right thing only because it was declared to be a non-local name early on and therefore future assignment statements to it will rebind it not in the local frame but in the non-local frame. Uh, we're going to declare balance to be non-local and then we will ask whether amount is greater than balance. If so, return you are broke. Otherwise, we'll rebind balance to be whatever balance was before minus amount and then we'll return that balance just so we know what's going on. And we can return withdraw here. Okay, let's experiment with this function. Uh, we want a function, withdraw. We could call it whatever we want. Let's call it w just so we're clear what's going on. So w will be the result of calling make withdraw on $100. So w is a function. What function was well, the withdraw function that we defined within make withdraw? And what happens when we withdraw $0? Well, we see the balance. And every time we withdraw $0, nothing changes. But if we start withdrawing $1 at a time, we see that the balance is decreasing. And if we try to withdraw too much, it tells us we're broke. Let's take a quick look at the environment diagram again. I know I already showed it to you, but now you have seen the code, so that might make it easier to figure out what's going on. So we define make withdraw, and then we call it, which means we define withdraw, and we return it. Okay, so now we have a withdraw function whose parent is the make withdraw frame with a balance of $100. Now we withdraw, which means we call withdraw. The parent of this frame is the make withdraw frame. So whenever I look up balance, I'll find that it's 100. We don't need this non-local statement in order to look up balance. The only thing we need it for is in order to change balance. This is about mutation of non-local values. Okay, if amount is greater than balance, which it's not, we would return insufficient funds. Here is where we make the non-local assignment statement. So how this works is, we find balance minus amount, which is 100 minus 25. Nothing special has happened there. But then, since we've declared balance non-local, when we assign to it, we'll assign this remaining amount 75 here, instead of putting a name balance here in the local frame. So there it changed to 75, and that's what we return. 